Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, we're going to be installing Manjaro OS. Uh, welcome to today's video. Uh, today, we're going to be installing Manjaro OS. So uh, let's go on to Google and uh, let's go to DistroWatch. And you will see that Manjaro is number four in the popularity rankings of their PageHit ranking um, algorithm. So uh, essentially what this does is tells you how many times this distribution has been clicked within that website. So Manjaro is number four. Now, you might wonder why uh, like Ubuntu is so low down. Um, it's because people probably go straight to the Ubuntu website, not necessarily to uh, DistroWatch. Um, but um, Manjaro is number four. Um, I've already got reviews for MX, Endeavor, and Mint. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to create and install Manjaro OS. So with that, let's go to Google. Type in Manjaro. And then we'll go to the Manjaro website. Now all you have to do is click Get Manjaro. And you can choose the architecture. ARM is for Raspberry Pi. X8664 is for your PC. So click on that. And you've got various versions available. We've got Plasma, XFCE, GNOME, uh, Budgie, Cinnamon, um, i3, Sway, Mate, and a Docker image. So um, these are the official ones. These are community editions. So we're going to go for an official one. Um, so I've already done a review of Ubuntu with GNOME. I've done Plasma Desktop for Endeavor. So let's do XFCE for Manjaro. And I'm going to click Download. And you can choose where you're going to download it from. Uh, I'm going to do the full image. And you can choose between minimal or full. Minimal gives you a cut down version. Um, but uh, for this, uh, I'm going to show you how to install a full XFC desktop experience. And you can see it's starting to download in the bottom left corner. Uh, whilst that's doing that, we'll get the software required to create the USB drive. So go to another tab. And we're going to type etcher.io. And we're going to do download etcher. And then it's going to ask you what you want to um, download for. And we're going to choose the first option, which is the installer. And that's also going to download in the bottom left hand corner. OK, so now you can see that both the Bellino Etcher and Banjaro have finished downloading. So what we're going to do now is install Bellino Etcher and uh, that way we can uh, create the USB drive. So you'll need a blank USB drive at this point or a USB drive where you don't care if the data gets wiped or not. You, um, insert it into your computer at this stage. OK, so um, you can see I've got Manjaro here and Bellino Etcher set up here. So if I double click on the Bellino Etcher setup, it comes up with a license agreement. I have to click I agree. And it's launched itself automatically. Uh, it should also have appeared in your menu. And it has. So if it didn't uh, launch automatically, it should just appear in your Windows menu. So, OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to flash from file. And we can click on the Manjaro ISO that you downloaded. And select the target. And you're looking for your USB drive. Uh, make sure it's around about the right size. You don't want to be overwriting Windows partitions. Uh, and then click flash. This process can take a while, so uh, um, go and get a drink, come back in about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, you can see the ETA there. Um, it's going to do a verification step after the flashing, so um, it's going to be a little bit more than um, the 10 minutes that you can see there. So eventually, uh, after the flashing and the verification, you'll see a flash completed uh, message. And this is the point you can uh, reboot your computer. 
When your computer reboots, press the relevant function key to bring up the boot menu. This differs from manufacturer to manufacturer and can be found on Google. When the boot menu appears, select your USB drive and press the return key. When the Manjaro menu appears, you can choose to boot with either open source drivers or proprietary drivers. For this tutorial, I'm choosing open source drivers. When Manjaro boots up, you should see a welcome screen. At the bottom of the screen is a launch installer button. Click on this button to begin the installation. When the installer starts, choose your installation language from the menu provided. When you click the next button, a map should appear and you can choose your location on the map and this will set your clock and your time zone correctly. After clicking next again, you should be able to choose your keyboard layout. Choose your keyboard language and then the layout of the keys. Next comes the partitioning screen. By default, Manjaro set itself up to use my entire disk. Um, you can choose manual partition if you want to create your own partitions but I recommend choosing the entire disk unless you're dual booting, uh, but that's a different video altogether. When you click next again, you will be able to set up a user. Enter your name and a username. Enter the name for your computer and then choose a password and repeat the password. You can choose to log in automatically by checking the box and you can choose to use the same password for the administrator account. If you choose not to use the same password, you have to enter the password for the administrator account and repeat it. Click next to continue. An overview screen will now appear showing the options you have chosen thus far. This is your last chance to stop and walk away if you do not want to overwrite your partitions on your drive. If you choose to continue, click install and Manjaro will be written to your hard drive. The installation could take a little while so you can go and take a break. Uh, once it's finished, you can reboot your computer and remove the USB drive and you should be able to see the Manjaro boot menu. Simply enter your password when the login screen appears and you will boot into Manjaro. And that is the end of the video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see a review of Manjaro Linux, click the subscribe button because that's the next video up on the weekend. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.